For a current project of mine, I need to create a world map built from a hexagonal grid that is either procedurally generated or customizable through gameplay by the player. This map would be visible from a third person bird's eye view, and once certain map sections are unlocked, the player could visit these areas seamlessly in first person to explore them in detail. But before I get into any of that, I need to create a customizable grid system where I can generate any map for whatever size, scale, and style I need. So let's dive in. When we're talking about a grid system, we're essentially referring to a tile-based system where the background or world of a game consists of uniform shapes laid out in a grid. This technique was used frequently during the early video games of the 1970s, often because of hardware considerations. Namco's answer to Space Invaders, Galaxian, was one of the first games to utilize a tile-based system. In the future, games like the Civilization series, the Battle of Westnoth, and Ultima would use a tile-based grid system to provide structure for gameplay. So when presented with a tile-based system, the rules of navigation or how the player can interact with the world become visually apparent. And the sooner a player can learn how to interact with your game, the sooner they can start having fun. So what do we need to know to get started on our own grid system within the Unreal Engine? Our goal today will be to create a grid system actor to handle the generation of our map, a tile actor that will be used for each individual tile that we can customize later on, and a hexagonal mesh that we will use for our hexagonal grid. The grid itself will be based on an X and Y coordinate system and customizable to any height or width. We also want to be able to change the scale of the map and add a spacing offset between tiles if we want. I also want to be able to decide whether the map uses instance meshes or individual child actors for more flexibility later on, so we'll need a Boolean variable for that. Finally, we are aiming for a hexagonal grid, but I want to be able to swap out the mesh if needed later on. Now our first step is to create our two actors, our grid system actor and our tile actor. I've created both in the folder here and named them BP hex grid and BP tile. Then we can hop into Blender to create a simple hexagonal tile with a small bevel to add some depth and import that mesh into our project. Now before I head into the grid system actor, I want to get the tile actor set up first. Now I've actually decided that I want to start with a cube system initially in order to simplify the initial setup since cubes are a bit easier to work with than the hexagonal meshes. So I've created another actor in my folder here called BP cube tile. We can open that up and insert our static mesh and set it to one of the cube meshes that comes with the engine. Now we can head into our grid system actor and set up our initial height and width loops to create our grid. We'll use two loops, one for height and one for width. That will cycle up to a height or width integer variable that we can set in the editor. We can then set that to a Boolean branch that reads our instance variable to determine whether we want to generate an instance mesh or child actors for our grid. For those, we can set our instance mesh to our cube and set the child actor class to our BP cube tile. Now I have the loops generating the meshes, but they spawn in the same location. And that's no good. So we need to use the size of our mesh to determine the distance at which the individual tile should be spaced. Now we could simply create a float variable and set it manually, but I want to be able to swap our grid mesh out and not have to calculate or change that value every single time. So I created an exposed variable to set our mesh in the editor, then set our instance mesh and child actor mesh to that variable. We can then set a float variable, radius, using get bounding box on our mesh variable to determine the size of our mesh at runtime. Now I can take that radius variable and use that to shift the location of our tiles based on the current index of our loops. However, I also want to add a way to create an offset between tiles if needed. So we'll need to adjust our tile location code just a little bit. We can create another float variable offset and add that to our already calculated positioning based on the radius of the mesh. Adding that gives us this, which is not quite right. 
So we also need to account for which tile we are calculating the offset for, because as we move further away from the origin of our grid, the offset distance will need to be larger for each tile because of the existing offset before it. And we can do that with this little code adjustment right here. And we now have a flexible grid with height, width, and offset variables. But we have one more parameter to add for our grid. First, we can add another float variable, scale. We will first plug that into our add instance and add child actor nodes here to adjust the relative transform scale. Doing so will allow us to increase the size of the spawn meshes. However, we have a little bit of a problem. It doesn't scale the positioning. So we just need to multiply our radius calculation here by the scale. And with that, I have an adjustable cube-based grid system. And if that's your goal, you're done. You're done. You're done. That's it. But I want a hexagonal grid system. So let's pop our hexagon tile mesh in here. That's not right. So our positioning math is going to be a little bit different because the geometry of a hexagon is different than a square. A square is simple. Four equal sides. The radius is half the height, half the width. It's easy. A hexagon actually has two radii an inner and an outer. And through the power of math, if we know one, we can figure out the other. So using our existing radius bounding box script, I'm gonna take the X distance to get the inner radius. Then we need to adjust our positioning code to match the positioning formula for a hexagon. Here the X position will still be twice the calculated radius, but the Y positioning will be twice the radius divided by the square root of three multiplied by 1.5 and the index of our loop. But we still need one more piece of code to make this work for our hexagon mesh. Unlike the cube grid where each tile was immediately adjacent to one another, they're both vertically and horizontally, our hexagonal tiles will need to shift every other row. This shift can occur to the left or to the right, or to the left, to the right. We're gonna shift it to the left. So I added a simple flip-flop code that runs after each row loop is completed. That either sets the row offset variable to zero or to the radius multiplied by negative one. We then can add this row offset to the X positioning value here. And with a simple material added to our hexagon mesh and some basic color randomization, we have our grid. So in the future, I'd like to dive a little bit more into adjusting individual tiles, maybe adding some height noise or project the noise filter to allow for more varied grid patterns. But for now, this basic grid system is a good starting point for my project. Thank you for watching. And if this video was helpful for you, please like and subscribe below. I've included the project source files down in the description as well. And for our next goal, we're looking into learning how to manipulate the individual tiles as we start moving towards building playable maps. Until then, this is the stay at home dev signing off.